Hello dear family, it's Dawn with Watchwoman on the Wall. As you see, I've got my Lion of Judah shirt on again. You guys must think I have no clothing, but this is like my favorite shirt. And I, again, I am shopping, grocery shopping at Aldi. And again, I felt the uh, spirit leading me, prompting me to make a video. Um, if you haven't guessed by now, going out to grocery shop is my favorite because I live in a rural area and that means that I'm 25 minutes from everywhere and so I get to drive and uh, because I work from home I don't get a lot of drive time in and that is where I really relate to God and, and, and take time to um, just really cry out to God and worship Him and uh, this is my space. This is where, this is my prayer closet. Um, I pray at home, but you know, I'm always surrounded by people at home, so it's a little harder to get away. This is just a beautiful time to worship him. And I was in deep worship of him and, um, and I was in the throne room. I don't know if you've ever gotten into such deep worship that you feel like you're in the throne room of God. And I was there in the spirit. And, um, I don't know if you guys do this, but when, um, you're going to think I'm weird, but when I go on shopping trips or I'm driving around and I want to speak to the Lord, I'll actually like move the stuff off my passenger seat, my passenger seat. So Jesus can sit there. I'm not even joking. I moved my cross, my grocery shopping bags to the back seat and moved room out of the floor space. I know that's ridiculous, but I feel like I need to prepare a place for him in my heart. And so as a physical way, physical way of showing that's what I'm doing. Um, a lot of times I'll clear up the front seat. So I don't want him sitting on um, napkins and things. So I know that's funny, but that's how I get myself in the mindset that he's in there. He's here with me, even though I know he is no matter what. And so I was in the middle of worship and I realized that I'm rich. I'm rich. We all who have received Christ are rich. And I don't know what your situation is right now. I don't know if you know you're on your last piece of bread to put together a sandwich. I don't know where you're at in life, but I want to remind those of you who have put your trust in Jesus, you have an inheritance in Christ. And even though things might look uh, scary, maybe things look a little bit uh, desperate, um, I want to remind you that Jesus is coming, but also that you have an inheritance in him and that your inheritance is rich. You are a rich person. And um, I couldn't help but in the spirit to see um, that Jesus has, God has good things for us. The Father says that no mind can conceive what um, he's going to show us. And I know I'm paraphrasing. But also while I was in prayer, I thought of that scripture in Mark, Mark 8:36. It says, For what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? And the Holy Spirit said, invert that. So I'm paraphrasing here. But this is just to give you a different perspective on the scripture. So in other words, the opposite is true. How will a man lose if he loses what he has in this world, yet retains his soul for eternity with Jesus? Have you ever thought of that scripture in that light? So what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? But how will a man lose if he loses what he has in this world? yet retains his soul for eternity with Jesus. I want to keep a heavenly perspective in a world that it's easy to only have short-term focus because we feel it here, right here and right now. We feel an empty stomach. We feel um, looking at the bank account, not sure how um, the math is going to work out. We feel those things. We feel um, sickness. We feel uh, family relationships not working how we want them to work. We feel rejection. We feel all these things, but we lose sometimes the sight of what is ahead for us and what we stand to gain. I think I wrote a poem a while back. If I can dig it up, maybe I'll come back and read it to you. But I think it was called What We Stand to Gain. So I used to write a lot of poetry back in the day. I should probably get back to that, but I just, the Lord had me doing it for a season and I filled up a small book with poetry. So if I can find that and I feel like it, it pertains to this, maybe I'll attach it at the end of this video while I'm out, uh, when I get back from shopping. So I want to read to you a few scripture in reminding us what Jesus did for us so that we can understand how rich we are. Ephesians 1, 7 through 8 says, in him, 
Oh, I think I'm going backward. That's not the one I wanted to read. I'll read that last. Uh, 2 Corinthians 8, 9 says, For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus. See, I see that grace, His grace, our riches are always tied to His grace. If it weren't for His grace, which we receive through faith in Him, in Jesus' blood, um, and how He sacrificed His life for us on the cross, um, if it weren't for His grace saving us, we wouldn't have a future. Keep that in mind as I read this, because you're going to see this familiar uh, parallel of grace always being attached to these rewards, these, these uh, riches. So 2 Corinthians 8, 9 again says, For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that you, through his poverty, might be rich. Jesus took upon himself human, uh, a human body. Um, he was immortal. He's always been. He was with he was uh, with us in the beginning. He was with God in the beginning. He's always been eternity, past, present, future. But he took on human flesh and became poor. Jesus didn't come as a king. Um, physically speaking, he was poor even. He came um, to a poor carpenter and his wife. And he remained poor throughout his ministry. Um, you know, it's not like uh, people were just uh, funding the way for him. I believe there were a few people funding some of the ministry that was going out, but that's because, I, to be honest with you, I believe some of them thought that he was going to rise up and uh, take his place and oust the Romans. Some might not have. Some may have seen um, why he truly came and understood the prophecies, but some of them, they thought, even including some of his disciples, if not all of them at one point, that he was going to raise up an army and oust the Romans and he would be the king just as prophesied, but they had a different way of thought, of thinking of how he would do it. So he became poor that through his poverty, we might be rich. He went through all he went through in the humiliation of the cross as well and death that we might be able to have newness of life and we might believe on him and then resurrected and we believe on him that he did that. And so we are rich because of him. So I want to remind you that it's only because of Jesus Christ and his sacrifice for us that we're rich. It's nothing we can do of our own selves. Ephesians 2, 7 says, says so that in the ages to come, this is, this is to remind you of our future in, um, with Jesus in eternity. So that in the ages to come, he might show the surpassing riches of his grace and kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. This is God showing it in Christ Jesus, his grace. And um, he's, he's going to show us his riches. And so that's to remind you of your future. Ephesians 1, 7 through 8, this is what I was going to read earlier, is um, for right now. So if you're, you're um, this is to show you what Jesus did then. This is to show you what your future is. And now this is to show you what you can look forward to now while you're waiting for that eternity with Jesus. Ephesians 1, 7 through 8 says, in him we have redemption. Praise God. Through his blood. There it is again. Through his blood. The forgiveness of our trespasses. So we're redeemed. We're forgiven. And according to the riches of his grace. There it is again. His grace. Which he lavished on us. The, the word lavish implies giving without, uh, with abandon. A lavish. A lavish giving is not a stingy giving. It's not somebody who holds back some for themselves. It's not a calculated giving. It's, it's what he, he's giving us everything he has. And um, when you understand that he's not holding back his love for us, he's not holding back his riches, he's not holding back his forgiveness, he's not holding back his redemption when we receive it. The appreciation that wells up with you and the praise is going to be forthcoming organically because you understand, maybe even some of you for the first time, that Jesus is not holding anything back. He's giving you everything. All he asks is that you receive the gift he's given you and you choose him to save you. And he will do the finishing work in you through Holy Spirit who comes inside you, seals you for that day and you're ready to go. And I just want to encourage all of you who are like, uh, you know, those things sound great for tomorrow, for next, whenever he actually comes. But you have to understand that you're rich now and start living with that mindset that he, he's given you so much. He's lavishing his love on you. 
All right, so I'm going to stop this camera and go shopping, and then if I can find that uh, that poem, hopefully I'll find it. And if it and if it pertains to this, I will add it to the end of this video. If it doesn't, this is the end of this video. <laughs> all right, I love you all, Maranatha, and have a wonderful day. Hi, this is Dawn again with Watchwoman on the Wall. Uh, I was thinking about the title of the poem I was telling you about and I couldn't find it and I think it's because it's not a poem I wrote but the title of a video I'd done a little while back. But I was looking through some of my old poetry and I came across a poem I'd written, I always dated them, May 6th, 2008. So this was a while back. I think my very last poem was in 2019. But So this, this here of this book represents years of poetry. It was almost full when I stopped writing. For whatever reason but uh i wanted to share this one poem with you that um i hope encourages you i hope blesses you and i hope reminds you of the father's love for you it's called a love note it reads this way rest in the shadow of my wing dear child and still your mournful cry <laughs> there is a bug trying to get to my eye <laughs> all right Hear my still small voice in the night and know you're the apple of my eye. Lean not on your unsure self, for mighty is the rock of ages. Draw the water from the living well and your wisdom from my truth-bearing pages. I long to be the first in your life, my child, to be thanked, to be praised for the good. And when hope seems a fragile whisper, sorry, to be clung to, though not always understood. Draw all men unto me with your light, though alone in the dark it may seem. Give me a minute. Breaking the darkness and rushing it out, attracting the lost to its beam. I love you, you know, in the purest of ways, for my son took the pain of your sin. And I turned away for your sake, child, so that I could see you again. Just call to me, call out my name. Remember that you are mine. Your heavenly Father's love for you transcends the age of time. All right, well, I love you all. And uh, again, let me know if you need prayer. I'll talk to you later. Maranatha.